Wrestling Connection, I'm Todd Kennelly, along with Jeff Aiken. And Jeff, tonight, the tag team titles will be on the line, but I cannot believe what I'm hearing we've got in store for our main event. The papers are signed. I think everything's set and ready to go for the first time in years. It's the grappler, the original grappler, in action right here at the WCWC as he takes on Matt Stryker. It's going to be a legend in his own time in the grappler against a legend in his own mind in Stryker. That to come, it's time to fight on. The tag team champions have action coming up tonight in the ring with Mikey O'Shea and the tough man, Crash Test Cody. Mikey O'Shea? You, you mean, and look, we've dealt with him before. He's big, he's strong, Crash Test is good, but you know Crash Test, he's accident prone. He, he tends to get hurt. Is that the guy you would want to be riding with? Absolutely not. Gibson is riding with Romero. Gibson and Romero, GNR, the only GNR. And tonight, we get in the ring. You guys are going to be left on Skid Row. Meanwhile, we're going to be holding these titles for 18 of life, you know. And if you're mad at me, you're mad at a god. Woo! Sports Radio 750 and 102.9 The Game is the Sports Station. Dan Patrick, live 6 to 9 a.m. Jim Rome, 9 to noon. John Canzano, noon to 3. The Huddle with Mike Rags, 3 to 7. 750 and 102.9 The Game. Mm, I'm famished. Uh, I'm getting a little hungry. Mm, not enough. There it is. What do you got, good and cheap? You got just the cheap. <laughs> Do you have what it takes to be a professional wrestler? the West Coast Wrestling Connection and their next live PDX TV taping Saturday, April 2nd at the Jackson Armory in Portland. Tickets are only $10. Buy one ticket and get one half off with no limit on half off tickets. First bell is at 1 p.m. You'll see all of the stars, the most action, and the best matches the West Coast Wrestling Connection has to offer. Get your tickets now online or at the door the day of the show. Come be a part of the show. See you there. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest on this week's episode of the West Coast Wrestling Connection is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the WC, WC Tag Team Championships. Introducing first, the challengers. They are the team of Mikey O'Shea, MCTC, Crash Test, Cody. CTC and O'Shea have been riding a wave of momentum. They get a shot at the tag team titles. Let's hear from the challengers. Romero, Gibson, I am sick and tired of you running your mouth with those tag team titles tonight. We take them from you! Tell them, Cody! Nothing to lose. They 
they seem primed and ready for their opportunity at the tag team titles. What a way to kick off the action. Tag team titles on the line. And their opponents Mr. Tubbs presents the WC, WC Tag Team Champions, The Rock God, Ricky Gibson and Greg Romero. Incredible way to kick things off here. Jeff Aiken, Tag Team Titles on the line and Romero and Gibson proving that they're much more than a little bit of rock and roll hoochie coo. They've continued to defend those titles match after match, including against the former champs, the whirlwind gentlemen. By hook, by crook, they find a way to win. Time and time again. And ladies and gentlemen, this week's episode of the West Coast Wrestling Connection is brought to you in part by Dave's Killer Magic Shop, the Vancouver Auction Outlet, Meds for Less and Furniture, the Brunch Box, the Pita Pit, Sparky's Pizza, Voodoo Donuts, and the Hampton Inn and Suites. Well, sit right back in some of that comfy uh, furniture from Beds for Less because you're going to get ready for one heck of a ride this entire broadcast. But again, what a way to kick things off. Tag team titles on the line. And O'Shea and CTC right now staying cool, calm, and collected. They know how big of this opportunity is for them. O'Shea, a former tag team title holder here on this broadcast. Well, and Crash Test Cody, enormously popular with the fans of the West Coast Wrestling Connection, and there they are. The tag team championship belt, and right there the champions showing their blatant disrespect for the official in this. Now, a few moments ago, we saw what might go down as the most important maneuver in this entire matchup, and that was the handoff. The eight ball from Greg Romero to Mr. Tubbs. We've seen it play a role time and again. Will it tonight? Well, the official threw that T-shirt into the corner. I wish he'd throw it all the way back to the locker room because that has been the sheath for that devastating eight ball that has led to many victories for the tag team champions. Color and elbow tie up to start things off. O'Shea and the Rock God, Ricky Gibson. O'Shea taking the side headlock. Good luck getting out of that. Gibson shrugs him off, but gets absolutely run over. Did you catch that license plate? O'Shea starting this off, unlike last week, their match with the Bonus Boys, the match that really led to this matchup with Mikey O'Shea and Crash Test Cody getting the championship shot. Crash Test Cody started in the ring and really ended up spending most of the time in there. They're pulling out the big guns early. O'Shea so showing some charisma there, showing a little confidence perhaps, a little cockiness, cockiness maybe, but showing that he'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the tag team champions in that department and certainly in the physicality department. Runs over Gibson again and a big scoop and a slam and back to the drawing board for the Rock God. He better head backstage. Well, we've seen some real evolution in the, in the, in the tactics and the strategy of the tag team champions here as of late. They're working together so much more smoothly. Their double teams are a lot more effective. When they got Mikey O'Shea in there, that's what they're going to have to rely on are those double teams. The man's just so big, so strong, and so fast. We will see if Greg Romero, the other half of the tag team champions, will fare better than Gibson did. He's in there with CTC. Crash test Cody, beautiful series of moves there. The drop toe hold goes for a ride, trying to get to north-south position. But Greg Romero showing some wrestling acumen in his own right. Working over the arm. You know, we think of Greg Romero like a street fighter, like a punk, like a thug, just in there wanting to fight, but he can grapple with the best of them. But Crash Test Cody, here over recent weeks, we've really seen him step up his grappling game as well. I have to credit some of that to his series of matches he had to the Legacy Championship and Grappler 3. He had to step up his game. It's really going to pay off for him if he can keep to that game plan against the rock god, Ricky Gibson, right now. Gibson grabs the side headlock, and... The challengers as CTC breaking down the rock god here. Stepping over and working over the arm. The challengers O'Shea and CTC really had a, a great hurdle to jump to get to this matchup. They proved that they can go at it with a physically dominant team when they defeated the bonus boys to earn this opportunity. So Gibson and Romero just viciously physical, but I think that O'Shea and CTC are gonna be up for the task. 
Well, we'll see. Gibson right now taking advantage of ring positioning there. And now we've got Romero in there as well. It's the double team that we needed to see against O'Shea. They're using it against Crash Test Cody. CTC in the wrong part of town. Not where you want to be there with the champs, especially with that T-shirt looming around. Always got to watch your back. Blatant choke by Romero. And these two will do their best. You know, you got the rock god, but he like, they, these two like to play the official like a fiddle. Like a electric a fiddle. A Gibson. <laughs> Thinking Revenge of the Nerds. Never saw an electric fiddle like that before. Greg Romero, a huge knee to the side of the face of Crash Test Cody. You got to wonder if Mikey O'Shea and Crash Test Cody win this match and walk out of here as tag team champions. If you look at the tag team partners that Mikey O'Shea held the championship belt with, Caleb Conley and Jeremy Blanchard. Hasn't worked out so well for Mikey O'Shea. Oh, well, and Gangrel, though. So let's, let's, oh, why right. don't we key in on that? Wow, did I just out history the historian of the WCWC? That's a little embarrassing. But if O'Shea and CTC can win the tag team titles, they will rock it right back to the top of the heap. Uh-oh, inside cradle here by CTC. Shoulders momentarily down. They'll rock it up there just like uh, Lamar's javelin from the Revenge oh, of the Nerds. Oh, look at that. A little different aerodynamics on that one. Personally, I prefer the uh, pie eating contest, but there, Greg Romero with his fingers in the nose of Crash Test Cody. You know, that roll up by Cody we've seen here in recent weeks, it's been a really effective way for him to kind of change the tide of a matchup, but he just doesn't have the physics, he doesn't have the mass to get the individual onto their shoulders fast enough. Much like the bonus boys did with this tandem of CTC and O'Shea, they try to isolate CTC and there's a weak link, but time and time again, he's, he proves that he's anything but but continues to eat the punishment of this double team. Frequent tags being made now. The champions just executing tag team wrestling 101, remaining fresh, but a nice desperation jawbreaker there by CTC. He starts to unload. The tag team 101 is exactly right. Crash House Cody fighting back, but he's got to get past and through Greg Romero to tag in Mikey O'Shea. Real battle of wills here. Both guys thinking the same thing. Both uncorking the heavy duty with the clothesline. Both men hit hard and heavy. And whoever can get to their feet or their corner first, Jeff Aiken, that may be a pivotal point in this matchup. Both guys moving so slowly. That double clothesline was so devastating. Crash test Cody is really struggling, but there he goes. Head of steam and Mikey O'Shea. Mikey O'Shea's the fresh man in the ring. O'Shea on the charge, a pair of big clotheslines there. Forearm for good me measure to Romero, who crumbles to the floor. Nice counter there by the Rock God, trying to play a little drum solo on the body of O'Shea. What? <laughs> he just catches him as soon as he hits the mat, up and all the way through the ring. Oh my goodness, Todd Kennelly, we could be looking at new tag team champions. Choke slam with authority, CTC asking for the tag. Are they going to double team? I don't know if that, that was the right move there. O'Shea looked like he had everything going the way of the challengers. Tubbs now on the outside. Crash test Cody set up for the ambulance chaser. Mikey O'Shea set up for devastation, but Munster Tubbs just on the apron is enough to get things turned around. Crash test Cody with the cross face. Are we going to get a submission victory here? Will history be made? He's tapping. It should be over. New champion should be crowned. But you just saw Todd Kennelly, Greg Romero, loading up the T-shirt. He's got the eight ball ready to go. And Crash Test Cody takes it right to the dome. I got to be honest with you, Jeff. I didn't see it because I was too busy seeing him tap out. And CTC didn't see it either. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the match. And still, WC, WC, Tag Team Champions, Ricky Gibson and Greg Rose. Romero. Another top team steps up to the plate, and another one strikes out with a serious fastball. Well, a serious fast eight ball right across the plate, right across the skull. Victory there by the tag team champions. Fans, we'll be back with more action after this. Up next on PDX, WCWC, let me tell you, it's the Bonus Boys versus the Whirlwind Gentlemen. And tonight, boys, we're going to hit you where it hurts the most. 
That's that pocketbook, that wallet, because you guys are taking home the losing share of the purse. Come along! You're approved? I'm approved? Yes, you're approved at Vancouver Auction Outlet. I'm approved? I'm approved? I'm approved? Yes, everyone's approved at Vancouver Auction Outlet. Hundreds of cars for every budget. Uh, no, you're not approved. We're approved? These guys? Yep, everyone's approved at Vancouver Auction Outlet. Come drive your car today. Picasso here. I don't know who these losers are. It's got some sort of tool. It's got looks like some sort of used Q-tip. I'm here to tell you about the wrestling circus that is Voodoo Donut. Our freaking fabulous fritters, just like a full-on folding chair to the head. <sighs> oh, the finisher move that we have, called the Bacon Maple Bar, you will not survive. Oh, oh, Voodoo Donut, where the magic's in the hole. Open right now. Beds for Less and Furniture, where ladies and gentlemen have been shopping for quality, affordable furniture for almost 10 years. Ladies love the luxurious couches and sofas. Gentlemen dig relaxing in a huge selection of recliners. Beds for Less and Furniture, with complete living, dining, and bedroom sets, all your furniture needs. Come where ladies and gentlemen shop. Beds for Less and Furniture. Don't miss the West Coast Wrestling Connection as they return to Salem Sunday, April 3rd at their new location, the Scottish Rite Center on South Commercial Street with an early start time of 1 p.m. Plus, after the matches, stay for a meet and greet, an after party, and a big surprise. Get your tickets now online or at the door the day of the show. There's nothing like the WC Live. See you there. Sports Radio 750 and 1029 The Game is Station. Dan Patrick, live 6 to 9 a.m. Jim Rome, 9 to noon. John Canzano, noon to 3. The Huddle with Mike Rags, 3 to 7. 750 and 1029 The Game. This week, Kate Carney presents Ethan HD. Here to guarantee his success against Adam Thornstow tonight. Adam, one question. Who can stop me? Ooh, that would make a good t-shirt. Yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah. Down for that a lot. Wrestling fans, the West Coast Wrestling Connection continues with the following contest set for one fall. Introducing first. Come on, man. Ethan H. D. Welcome back, everybody, to the West Coast Wrestling Connection. Getting set for more action, and the presence of Kate Carney paid dividends for that man, Ethan H. D. The last time he faced Adam Thornstow, will it do so again here tonight? Hotly anticipated rematch coming your way. We're back one more time. Adam Thornstow, Ethan HD. Last time, Kate Carney, you try and get a little feel on Adam Thornstow's leg. This week, I'm giving you the whole deal, and you get to watch me beat Ethan HD, internet darling, king of indies. Oi. <laughs> and his opponent. Jeff Aiken, all business on the kisser of that man. A man trying to bring oi to the world. Adam Thornstow out for revenge. Really have to consider it an upset victory when he was defeated by Ethan HD, courtesy of a little distraction by Kate Carney. Well, a big comeback for Adam Thornstow. The West Coast Wrestling Connection fans were absolutely blowing up Twitter when he came back two weeks ago against Ethan HD. And if you want to do the same, we are at the WCWC. Heck, we're on Twitter right now join the conversation, but you're right, Kate Carney was absolutely pivotal in that victory. 
you know, normally we see Thornstoke come out here, and yeah, he's, he's, he's all about business. He's an athlete, he's a competitor, but he's a family man as well. He likes to have a good time, and you kind of see a little bit of cheer in him when he's coming out. None of that tonight. He's all business, and he's waiting to get his hands on Ethan HD. Ethan HD, Kate Carney and company really playing spoiler, that big comeback. The fans erupted when Thornstoke came through the curtain last time we saw him a couple weeks back. HD now gets a huge chop to the chest. There was out there John with the fans. And uh, it's, it's time for business. I tell you what, you buy a ticket to the West Coast Wrestling Connection. We bring the action right to you in the ring, the bell, uh, into the ring, and the bell rings. This match is officially underway. I think Thornstell wants to ring the bell of Ethan HD time and time again in this matchup. Dragged him in the ring and now going to work. Thornstow wants to. Have a little fun, but perhaps make quick work of him. Thorn still realizes that, you know, he makes that comeback. Eating a loss, really a big factor. He wants to turn the tables and get a win here tonight. He's got a lot riding on this right now. I mean, coming in and, and losing to Ethan HD in, in his return right now, he, he's looking to reestablish himself as he was when he came back. But, I mean, Thornstow has been a top competitor here in the WCWC. has come so close to championship gold so many times. But Todd Kenley, the question is, does Ethan HD have what it takes to make it two in a row, or was it a fluke? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Jeff. E let's play devil's advocate. You know, what will it do for the career of Ethan HD? Two consecutive victories over a perennial title contender in Adam Thornstow. That's going to skyrocket him right up into title contention. Well, right now, he's uh, not exactly skyrocketing. He's uh, heading down south to Pity City. That's just gross. There's no reason for that. I mean, he's got kids at home. Are they going to see him like that here on television? See Kate Carney there with that. You know, i got to say, it's questionable that bag she's always carrying with her. Oh! And using Kate Carney as a human shield. Well, Ethan HD by any means necessary, but yeah, to get back to your earlier point, I don't think it, uh, I don't think it paid to be late to bed in the, uh, in the Thornstow house. Yeah, no. <laughs> Bit of a standoff here. I don't know if Thornstow exactly knows what to do. I think he knows exactly what to do. Move her out of the way and get to work on Ethan HD, but HD was ready for him. And oh, come on. What the five fingers say to the face? You see the fingernails on the hand of Kate Carney? Those things just scratched across. Ethan HD. Yeah. Freddy Krueger called, wants his hand back. This might be a nightmare for Ethan HD right now. If this continues, Thornstow in firm control. I've got to wonder, really, you know, what is in that bag? What is it holding? I, I wonder what kind it is. It is it on, almost looks like, oh my God, Corzy hooks the far leg. But I was wanting to get this out ever since she came out here. I found out it's actually a carne couture bag. She's got her own line of designer bags. Interesting. Not to be outdone. Oh, star struck knee there by Ethan HD. Quickly into the cover. Going to try and catch him. But Thornstow kicks out. Man, how impressive moments ago was that beautiful standing moonsault by Adam Thornstow. Surprised he didn't put him away. And now some vicious ground and pound by Ethan HD. And if we've learned anything about him throughout his tenure here in the WC, they don't get more aggressive than Ethan HD. Or, or effective. He gets aggr that aggression, he gets striking. He's such an effective and precise striker. Each one of those closed fists put exactly where he wants, capitalizing with that lateral press. Thornstow so able to kick out. Nice suplex there by Ethan HD, really starting to string together the offense and showing what has made him such a great competitor throughout his history. Several tag team titles in his history here on this program, would love to skyrocket to the top of the singles ranks, and I think he'll be well on his way. He gets a second victory, but not so fast, gentlemen. Whoa. Oh, elevator going down. Well, when they faced each other a couple of weeks ago, that's what I was saying, is Thornso needs to be focusing on the legs of Ethan HD, and now doing exactly that. This isn't gonna be focused on the legs. Oh, the legs are gonna be focused on the body of HD. Scum Stomp delivers. Takes him all the way down to the basement. Ethan HD is going to have to roll out of the ring. There's no way 
if Thornstow gets him covered, this is all but done, but no. HD, such an athlete, has so much in the gas tank, up to his feet. Services for Ethan HD, he's thinking Tombstone City, but the bonus boys come out of the back alley and start to go to work. Well, I guess with Kate Carney and company, it's not necessarily about winning, it's about making sure that you have made your exclamation point in the ring, and that's exactly what the bonus boys are doing now. Ladies and gentlemen, the official has disqualified Ethan HD. Therefore, the winner of this match as a result of a disqualification, Adam Thornstow. Thornstow gets the victory, but perhaps not the revenge he wanted, but he's gonna get it now. He's fighting Ethan HD all the way to the back, but now in the ring, bell sounds, and we've got our next matchup. And it's the whirlwind gentleman taking on the bonus boys out of nowhere. What a crazy chaotic scene. Oh, Magnum Opus coming. Oh my goodness, just like that. But Clutch makes the save or this thing would have been over. Yeah, this was scheduled to be our next matchup anyway. Kate Carney signed them back to back. Let's just keep it going. No love loss at all now between these two teams. They're coming up and now that double team by the whirlwind gentleman sets Clutch reeling all the way to the corner. Carney up there. Looking to take a shot. And Sugar Brown, well, he'll take a shot, a cheap shot at that. Hitting Remy Marcel from the back. What a wild scene. One match bleeds into the next and just nonstop action here in the West Coast Wrestling Connection. Sugar Brown now, big pinpoint knee strike. And the Bonus Boys in control of this matchup right now. Will it stay that way? We'll be back right after this. Sports Radio 750 and 1029 The Game is the Sports Station. Dan Patrick, live 6 to 9 a.m. Jim Rome, 9 to noon. John Canzano, noon to 3. The Huddle with Mike Rags, 3 to 7. 750 and 1029 The Game. Don't miss the West Coast Wrestling Connection and their next live PDX TV taping Saturday, April 2nd at the Jackson Armory in Portland. Tickets are only $10. Buy one ticket and get one half off with no limit on half off tickets. First bell is at 1 p.m. You'll see all of the stars, the most action, and the best matches the West Coast Wrestling Connection has to offer. Get your tickets now online or at the door the day of the show. Come be a part of the show. See you there. Dave's Killer Magic Shop. Oh, there's no such thing as magic. Do you believe in magic now? Dave's Killer Magic Shop for all your magic and novelty needs from A to Z. Awesome gags, bacon band-aids, finger underwear, magic kits, tricks to pick up chicks, zombie figurines, and much, much more. Get your kicks with Dave's Killer Tricks. Do you have what it takes? Professional wrestler. Contact us today for more information. We're approved. I'm approved. Yes, you're approved at Vancouver Auction Outlet. I'm approved. I'm approved. I'm approved. Yes, everyone's approved at Vancouver Auction Outlet. Hundreds of cars for every budget. Uh, no, you're not approved. We're approved? These guys? Yep, everyone's approved at Vancouver Auction Outlet. Come drive your car today. Welcome back everyone to the West Coast Wrestling Connection. Jeff Aiken throughout the break, the bonus boys, absolutely devastating. Well, maintaining those frequent tags we saw just before he we went to break, Sugar Brown tagged in clutch. There were a few more tags. Normie Marcel has been stuck on Bonus Boy Island ever since then. I don't think I'd want to go to Bonus Boy Island. It's not a fun place to be. That doesn't sound good at all. I think Morty has season passes though. <laughs> No tag was made, but the official busy over with Jack Manley, so that allowing liberties to be taken by the bonus boys. Sidewalk slam there by Clutch. Picking up the pieces now with Sugar Brown going for the win. Only a count of two 
Man, the whirlwind gentlemen hit the ring fast and furious. We're all over the bonus boys, but to their credit, the bonus boys have turned this thing around. Be a big victory for the bonus boys to defeat the former WCWC tag team champions. Kate Carney still out there ringside directing traffic, but Sugar Brown firmly in control and taking liberal use of that unique hairstyle of Remy Marcel. That's a big target. Tag is made, and the Bonus Boys remaining fresh, which when you're a bigger team, that is an absolute necessary key to success. He gets a whirlwind, gentlemen, but out the back door, schoolboy roll up by Marcel, and he gets trucked by the big man. The clutch able to get back up. Lateral press, hooks the leg. Whirlwind gentlemen have had a tough time of it as of late, ever since losing the tag team titles to, to uh, the current champions. You know, they, uh, they've really hit a big snag. This is probably the biggest slump that we've seen since they lost the titles to Gibson and Romero. They lost a couple of title rematches, and now they've really got knocked down a couple rungs. I don't know what it's going to do to them if they lose this matchup against the Bonus Boys, and that could happen. Well, they keep the Bonus Boys keep getting liberal right here with the uh, five counts with the referee. They're going to lose this match by disqualification, but I think we saw once Kate called them out after that match with Ethan HD and Adam Thornstow. It ain't so much about the wins as it is about making a statement. Extremely physical matchup both ways. Whirlwind gentlemen hit the ring fast. As I mentioned, they want to get back in title contention. Well, you can talk about making a statement. Both teams trying to do just that. But if you want a title matchup, getting some notches in that win column certainly going to matter, Jeff. Well, it makes all the difference in the world. I mean, that's everything. Well, the world might come crashing down for the gentleman there. Big splash by Clutch. And Manley comes in and makes the save. Well, when gentlemen are in trouble here, Jeff. Once again, we have seen them in this slump. And I think there's something that happened psychologically. They were on top for so long with the Tag Team Championship gold, and they were all but untouchable. They lost those belts, and I think that, made, that, 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 that hit them deep and it almost hit them in the soul. And they just haven't, we haven't seen the same whirlwind gentlemen since they lost the belts. Tag is made. Sugar Brown checking back in, maybe going to start throwing hands. He's got dynamite in that right hand. Oh. He calls it sweetness, and he is unloading some bombs. Heavy shots to the body. Ray Marcel can take an enormous amount of punishment. We've documented that time and time again, but Sugar Brown is just laying in those right hands with so much precision. Look at that, fighting back, sends Clutch down to the apron. Fans here really trying to urge Remy Marcel to get back into this thing, but he's a long way from his corner at this point. Sugar Brown tying him up. And right now, these competitors out of the U look like they are going to graduate with flying colors. Well, they've been focused on that midsection of Remy Marcel for so long. It's got to be difficult and painful for him to breathe. And now with Clutch checking in, you know, Clutch is so powerful, and he's got such a wide base. If he can get himself in that three-point stance and set him up for that TFL to tackle for loss, I'll tell you what, Todd Kelly, no one can get up from that. Clutch is living up to his name right now. He, in essence, has a death clutch on Remy Marcel. Everything these two do is effective. It's got a purpose, and it hurts. Well, it's like in baseball. They teach you to hit through the ball with the bat. We've seen that with everything. They're not just hitting Remy Marcel. They're hitting through him. So effective, so precise, so aggressive in everything oh. they do. But look at that. Heads up play by Remy Marcel. Oh, he was swinging for the fences. You want to swing through the ball? Swing through the skull of Clutch. What a shot, but can Marcel make the tag? This could be huge. A huge momentum switch in this matchup if Marcel can make the tag, but it's a race against the clock. Clutch looking for the tag, and he gets there first. Two, two fresh men check in here, Jeff, and man, who do you give the advantage now? Well, Jack manley has been on the outside a long time. He's fresh as he can be, and he has the definite speed advantage, but if Sugar Brown can get on his feet, well, Clutch is gonna come and help it happen. Man, all this going on, and Jack Manley is the only competitor left on his feet. Manley, all kinds of fired up here. Look at the emotion. And a little bit for Clutch, too, like he's got eyes in the back of his head. Jack Manley, dividing, conquering, 
and looking, looking good here in action. But how long can he keep this up? Uh-oh, Bulldog, Marcel now flying to the outside, takes out Clutch. Well, the whirlwind gentlemen back to doing what they do best. Working together, separating, divide, and conquer. You've got Remy, and you've got Clutch on the outside. Jack Manley, Sugar Brown all alone in the ring, and Jack Manley heading up to his comfort zone, that top rope. Manley up top. Oh, my goodness, what in the world? Kate Carney with that Carney Couture takes a cheap shot and a cheap win for the bonus boys. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the match, the bonus boys. Well, it might be cheap, it might be despicable, but Todd have been talking about it in recent weeks. A win is a win, and Kate Carney and the Bonus Boys on top. Well, we're gonna take another look at this. Jack Manley was absolutely competing out of his mind. He was on fire, goes to the top. He loves that flying clothesline, but the Bonus Boys had a little bonus trick up their sleeves. Kate Carney from the outside takes him down, and the Bonus Boys pick up the pieces and get the victory, and things go from bad to worse for the former tag team title holders, the whirlwind gentlemen. Todd Kennelly fans of the West Coast Wrestling Connection, right after this, we have it right now in our main event coming up, the legendary, the original grappler. He is gonna be taking on Matt Stryker. This is one you have to call your friends, call your family. This will be one for the ages. As we take a look at the bonus boys, these two might be here to stay fans. We will be back with our main event. Sports Radio 750 and 1029 The Game is Holy Sports Station. Dan Patrick, live 6 to 9 a.m. Jim Rome, 9 to noon. John Canzano, noon to 3. The Huddle with Mike Rags, 3 to 7. 750 and 1029 The Game. Mm, I'm famished. Uh, I'm getting a little hungry. Mm, not enough. There it is. What do you got, good and cheap? You got just the cheap. Do you have what it takes to be a professional wrestler? of wardrobe malfunctions, too many fashion fails, Cash Ross Creations, a doctor for your wardrobe. Cash Ross Creations, a leader in tailor-made suits for nearly 50 years. From professional to leisure suits, upcoming weddings or proms. Cash Ross has endless options and affordable elegance. Bespoke jeans, shirts, belts, and suits. Every fabric design available, we bring Hong Kong tailoring to you. Visit Cash Ross Creations downtown Portland or on the web. You know something? I appreciate everybody being behind me out here today. But there's one thing I can't understand. I came out here last week just trying to be at ringside with Marcus Malone, and they're telling me I got some kind of release that hadn't been signed by GoFarb, and I'm, I'm not, it's not legal for me to be out here. And it's always tough. Now here's Matt Stryker all of a sudden shows up. I don't know what I did to get everybody's attention, but apparently, the grapplers got everybody's attention. Senor Grappler, for those of these people here that don't know me, my name is Matt Stryker. <laughs> Matt Stryker, I respect all the things you've done. Yeah, yeah, the respect song. I've heard it so many times, Grappler, so many times. Can you rap it? It's 2016, why don't you rap for me? I know your day is here. You're in your prime. Mine's come and gone. I'm not about to think so, but you know what, bro? Yeah. I promise you one thing. I'm not here to fight nobody. I'm just trying to help some of these rookies around right here need help. Oh, you're trying to help the next generation, aren't you? Hey, Grap, have you looked out at the gene pool? They're far beyond help. 
Okay, so why don't you collect your social security, get your AARP, and toodle along. Toodles. You the people, don't you, Striker? It don't matter they're still behind me, brother, and I love each and every one of them. Are you kidding me? What blatant disrespect by Matt Stryker. And look, I don't disagree with Matt Stryker. I think Grappler, he, he, it's time, there comes a time when you go away, but seriously, you just disrespected, you dumped bottled water onto the legend. Grappler said he's, he, he's not out here to fight anybody, he's trying to bring up that new generation. Well, there's some old school justice, courtesy of the Grappler. That grappler looks like he's fit to compete to me with those right hands, and now G3 in the mix. Uh-oh. Puts a right hand of his own right there across the back of the grappler, and now it's just an out-and-out -out mugging. Absolute beatdown, and here comes Marcus Malone. Mayday Marcus just gets tossed out by striker. Momentum not in the favor of him as this attack continues. Crash Test Cody now arrives on the scene. People showing great respect for the grappler. But the grappler continues to be just throttled and choked out by Matt Stryker. The grappler, an absolute legend here in the Pacific Northwest. The, on us now, the Vampire Warrior, Gangrel with the little backup. With that chair, chasing, chasing him off, and it's Marcus Malone. It's Gangrel, and it's the original, the legendary grappler in the ring. Wrestling fans, the following contest is set for one fall. Introducing first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything. Everything, everything gonna be all right this morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Woo. yeah. He is hailing from Bayside, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matt Stryker. Matt Stryker making his way to the ring for our main event. And they don't get any bigger than this on this program, but Matt Stryker not coming alone. One hoop, would you? After he poked the grappler the way he did last week and took on Marcus Malone, he's gonna come in with backup. He made this so very personal when he dumped that bottle of water across the head of the grappler. Matt Stryker would be a fool to come out here on his own. And Matt Stryker is many things, Todd Kennelly, and a fool is not one of them. But for somebody that's been such a student of the game in the in the great sport of professional wrestling, does it surprise you maybe just a little bit that Matt Stryker would show such blatant disrespect for one of the sport's all-time greats? I just think he's seeing so much more of the long game than we're seeing right now. We've documented it so many times. He's always three, four, five moves ahead. I mean, he knew this was going to happen before he even made his return to the West Coast Wrestling Connection. Well, making that sign, little sign language of love there. Well, no love lost between Striker and the Grappler. Well, folks, go ahead and adjust your volume now. You are about to hear an absolute explosion. Matt Stryker lets Blake Chadwick out of that corner and he introduces the grappler. The roof is going to come off this place. And his opponent. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pacific Northwest Wrestling Legend, The Grappler! Matt Stryker making like a tree and getting out of there. And The Grappler comes to the ring. He doesn't come to the ring alone either. He's got himself a bit of an equalizer. He's got a little back, back up himself. 
Stryker's got a, got a microphone. Pressure up, Grandpa. Why don't you sit right back down in your Jennifer convertible? Come on, come on. These people do not want to see us wrestle. These people do not want to see a legend like the grappler be put to waste by the legend killer, Matt Stryker. see it happen for the first time ever! For the first time ever! But before we do this, I have two very well-dressed gentlemen that would like to speak with you. Ah, oh, don't tell me. What One lip shits and Dr. Goldfarb. you, Mr. Stryker. I think Morty's gonna try and file an injunction. Try being the operative one. Just word. hang on, just hang on. Uh, Dr. Goldfarb, you've got some paperwork I understand with you. With all due respect, Mr. Lipschitz, I'll take it from here. Mr. Grappler, what I have right here <laughs> is your medical release form. And you know what it's missing? Your name is on there, but you know what it's missing? My signature. And I couldn't, in good conscience, sign this release form. Not now, maybe not ever. You wanna know why? Because you haven't made any progress. In fact, I think you've regressed. You're still talking to Alex. You come out here cracking people over shut the head. Up, shut up and listen. I promise you one thing, and it's the last thing I do, I'm going to kick his ass. Grappler not willing to take no for an answer. Grappler trying to get to Stryker, but now a litany of officials have come out here. And okay. apparently the, 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 the paperwork not cleared, not signed. I mean, this is ridiculous. We heard everything was lined up. We heard this match was going to happen. I had it on good authority that Goldfarb had finally decided to sign that paperwork. And look at Stryker, awfully full of himself now. He's having some fun in there. Well, yep. I guess if that was the signed match, someone needs to ring a bell and award Matt Stryker the match because it doesn't look what? like it's going to happen. Give me a break. Legend killer, why don't you earn it? Oh, this changes things. Stepping into the realm of the deadly, sinister, vampire warrior, warrior, bust that, bust that, bust that, bust that. The vampire warrior Gangrel making his way out here, and he has had real issues in the past with Mount Striker. Not going to stand up for this. The vampire warrior has a wealth of respect for the original grappler, and rightfully so. We've seen him a number of times in the ring shaking hands, taking mutual positions of respect with each other, and now you've got the entire wrecking crew and Matt Stryker surrounding the ring. Gangrel looking for a microphone. Matthew Stryker. Yeah. You. I'm approved? Yes, you're approved at Vancouver Auction Outlet. I'm approved? I'm approved? I'm approved? Yes, 
Everyone's approved at Vancouver Auction Outlet. Hundreds of cars for every budget. Uh, no, you're not approved. We're approved? These guys? Yep, everyone's approved at Vancouver Auction Outlet. Come drive your car today. Beds for Less and Furniture, where ladies and gentlemen have been shopping for quality, affordable furniture for almost 10 years. Ladies love the luxurious couches and sofas. Gentlemen dig relaxing in a huge selection of recliners. Beds for Less and Furniture, with complete living, dining, and bedroom sets. All your furniture needs. Come where ladies and gentlemen shop. Beds for Less and Furniture. I'm famished. Uh, I'm getting a little hungry. Not enough. Hallelujah. There it is. What do you got, good and cheap? I've got just the cheap. Losers are. It's got some sort of tool. It's got looks like some sort of used Q-tip. I'm here to tell you about the wrestling circus that is Voodoo Donut. Our freaking fabulous fritters. It's like a full-on folding chair to the head. <sighs> oh, the finisher move that we have, called the Bacon Maple Bar, you will not survive. Oh, oh, Voodoo Donut, where the magic's in the hole. Open right now. Don't miss the West Coast Wrestling Connection as they return to Salem Sunday, April 3rd at their new location, the Scottish Rite Center on South Commercial Street with an early start time of 1 p.m. Plus, after the matches, stay for a meet and greet, an after party, and a big surprise. Get your tickets now online or at the door the day of the show. There's nothing like the WC Live. See you there. I think the Vampire Warrior is gonna do his, his talking with his actions. Gangrel not gonna stand for the actions. Matt Stryker was signed for a match. He was signed for a match with the Grappler. Morty Lipschitz, Goldfarb coming out here saying the medical paperwork not signed, not cleared, but Stryker's gonna be in for a fight anyway, but he clips the knees of the Vampire Warrior and goes to work, and perhaps the self-professed legend killer has another legend to kill here tonight. Well, Gangrel ready to take on anybody from the wrecking crew. Jeremy Blanchard, Grappler 3, or Matt Stryker. It didn't matter to him. He was ready to take him on from all sides. Stryker snuck in on him. Referee rang the bell. We've got an actual match here. Todd, it was supposed to be the Grappler in here, not Gangrel. Matt Stryker's not prepared for this matchup. And for the Grappler's own well-being, I, I don't know, perhaps this is for the best. And Vampire Warrior would want all too much to get his hands back on Stryker for his sins over the years. These two have gone at it right here on this program time and time again. I recall a two out of three falls matchup won by the Vampire Warrior, so an opportunity perhaps for re revenge for both men. Well, let's not forget the time when Mike, Matt Stryker interjected himself into a match and cost Gangrel the Pacific Northwest Championship. We talk about blood with the Vampire Warrior, especially in regards to my dry cleaners, depending on where they've got a sitting, but there is no good blood between these two whatsoever. Matt Stryker on this program has done more meddling than, than the, you know, the, the Mystery Inc. than Fred and Vilma and Daphne and Shaggy and Scooby. He's getting his hands in, into everybody's business. Well, it is. He's not even officially signed to the wrecking crew, but he's certainly got them all lined up to help him out, going for that pedigree. Oh, beautiful counter. Zoinks! What a counter there by Gangrel as he starts to go to work. Must have got his hands on some Scooby snacks. Either way, he just went right to the throat of Matt Stryker. Follows him in with authority. Look out here, big bulldog coming. Drives him right through the canvas. Gangrel looking good. Nothing Jeremy Blanchard can do on the outside, but look on as Gangrel going to work. Scoop and a slam. He loves that as a setup for that big winding corkscrew elbow, and he hits it to perfection. As he often does, grappler three up under the ring apron. Referee doesn't see it, doesn't react to it. Counts two. 
you know, Grant Grell was ready to take on any of these three competitors at the beginning of this matchup, but the reality is he's going to have to take all three of them on at the same time. Looking for that impaler yet again, but when you're in there with Matt Stryker, a student of the game, you can't go to the well too many times. Now G3 up on the apron, and Gangrel is absolutely swimming with sharks here, Jeff Aiken. Here's yeah, Matt Stryker gets ahead of Steve, gives up, no! And Grappler three heads down. Costly miscommunication. Boot to the midsection again. This time he hits it, Impaler on the money. I don't think this legend's getting killed tonight, but Blanchard, now this match should be over. What is right going there. on? We would have been up to a count of eight. Grappler three loads that boot right to the face of Gangrel. Gangrel is out, as is Matt Stryker. Grappler three lays him, come on. Now loaded boot. That's a load of BS is what it is. Not like this, don't beat the legend like this, no. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match, Matt Stryker. And I bet Stryker is gonna claim this victory and say that he did it all by himself. The greatest wrestler in the West Coast Wrestling Connection, you know, greatest wrestler in the era, Cody says. Well, I guess when you've got the wrecking crew behind you, you can beat just about anybody. And he just beat the best in Gangrel. No, he didn't beat him. They beat him. And I don't think you can keep Gangrel down. A vulgar display of power by the wrecking crew. Right now at this point, Gangrel would want nothing more than five minutes alone with Matt Stryker. Let's go back and watch the replay of what just went down. Well, Gangrel with the Impaler, he had this thing over, the referee distracted, and then you see G3 come in there, the big shot with the orthopedic boot. Yeah, quote yeah. unquote. Cough, cough. And they get the victory over Gangrel. An absolute sham. Gangrel doing what was right for the history of this great sport. He was respecting a veteran, a legend in the grappler, and this is what he gets for it. That striker definitely worse for the wear. Grappler three, let him know what a what a great competitor he was. You now he really gave it at all, but meantime in the ring, Gangrel slowly coming to. That boot absolutely knocked him out. Gangrel came out, he fought for the grappler. He fought, as you said, for the legacy of him and the, the entire Pacific Northwest. He gave it his all, but Todd, you've got to wonder, the grappler wanted his hands on Matt Stryker. The grappler escorted out of here. Goldfarb saying, I'm not going to sign it in good conscience now, maybe ever. Will we ever see the grappler compete in the WCWC ever again? Well, I don't, I don't think he's going to stop trying. You have to wonder what kind of game are Lipschitz and Goldfarb playing. But at some point, grappler's going to find his way into the ring. If looks could kill, we'd all be pushing up daisies. Well, what kind of game? Right now, it's game over for that man, the Vampire Warrior, but he will live. He will resurrect. He'll sit up out of that coffin. As long as he's got these fans chanting his name, the Vampire Warrior will walk through the flames yet again. Fans, what a night. Unpredictable night of action. We will see you again next week, right here in the WCWC. You can't kill tradition.